Good morning and welcome to worship on this Sunday, the 12th of December, the third Sunday in Advent and perhaps the last kind of normal service as we head towards Christmas and into 2022. Next Sunday is our Nativity service and we will put something online. So do keep an eye on Facebook and our social media. Uh, I'm not exactly sure when it will appear, just depends on what I've got available in the run up to Nativity Sunday. And we may well put something up after the morning service, but there will be something. So please just keep checking Facebook, uh, YouTube or the telephone line, depending where you join with us from. Over the coming services, we will, of course, celebrate the story of the birth of Jesus and welcome in a new year. And unfortunately, perhaps it promises to be another challenging year. But if 2021 has proved anything, it has proved that we can adapt and thrive, even in the face of grief, social distancing and political absurdity. And the God we worship also enables us to adapt and thrive. In fact, to find joy. So remember in the midst of the chaos and the crowds, a baby born in an animal shelter, that Mary treasured up all these things in her heart. So even in the midst of all that may be, we can still find treasure. And treasure is about what brings us joy. The things that we treasure are those memories that bring us joy. So what are your treasures this year? What are those things perhaps that you're looking forward to or perhaps those things that you treasure from previous years that bring you joy at this auspicious time of the year? Our call to worship comes from 1 Peter and says this, though you have not seen him you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. You believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Today we are looking at the story of Mary and Joseph, just a little bit of that story and exploring where we can find joy or perhaps not where we can find it, but how we understand joy in the midst of troubling times. So our first song today, understandably, perhaps, is the Magnificat, known as Mary's song, Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of Our Lord. And it's brought to us this week by the Everingham Singers. <laughs> Give my spirit 
Let us come before God in prayer and as we do, may our souls truly sing with his praise. Let us pray. Heavenly three in one, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we gather as your children to sing your praise, to rejoice in your presence and party with the angels as they too praise you. For you are holy and gracious and your name is to be praised. God Emmanuel, God with us. We look back over this week and we are grateful that you have been with us. We thank you for the words we spoke that lifted another up. We thank you for the actions that made someone else feel loved, wanted, appreciated, or simply just valued. In a world where the rich too often play by their own rule book and disregard others, as if they were useless, worthless, or simply there to serve. We pray that we would be aware of the small things, the words we speak, the decisions we make, the choices we live by, for in each of them we can share your mercy, your love, your compassion. Help us to stand up for what is right, even if that goes against the culture around us. We thank you for those who have uplifted us this week by their kindness, by their words, by their message of love or support. We thank you for those who served us in shops or banks, who taught our hyper children or brought healing in a myriad of ways, whose hands cared for our bodies or whose skills made our homes more habitable, those who took our rubbish and listened to our moans and groans. Lord, we thank you for one another, for as you live in community, so do we. Be with us in our rejoicing, that even in our troubled times, we can sing, rejoice and even dance. Be with us in the chaos and the crowds, in the unknown and downright frightening, in the Christmas magic and the disappointments, that we might rejoice in your faithfulness and goodness. Hear all our prayers as we bring them together in the words of our Lord Jesus. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38 and 46 to 55. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee, named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king, as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I'm a virgin, how then can this be? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth. It is said that she cannot have children, but she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she is very old. For there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. Then at verse 46, Mary said, My heart praises the Lord, my soul is glad because 
God is my saviour, for he has remembered me, his lowly servant. From now on, all people will call me happy because of the great things the mighty God has done for me. His name is holy. From one generation to another, he shows mercy to those who honour him. He has stretched out his mighty arm and scattered the proud with all their plans. He has brought down mighty kings from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has kept the promise he made to our ancestors and has come to the help of his servant Israel. He has remembered to show mercy to Abraham and to all his descendants forever. Amen. Thank you to Anne for sharing our reading from Luke's Gospel, sharing with us that part of Mary's story, part of where she obviously hears that she's going to be the mother of the Messiah and part of her song. And I do encourage you, if you've got the time, to go back and read all of it because we just read excerpts from it today. And then we heard a choir from the King's College, Cambridge, bring to us that song, The Holly and the Ivy. And I hope you enjoyed that beautiful rendition of it. Again, a song that kind of tells a little bit of this story about this special child. And we're going to explore that a little bit as we think about that whole idea of the essence of Christmas, giving and getting, with our focus this week quite clearly on joy. And I wonder if you're known as a joy-filled person, someone with a ready smile and a light touch, bringing joy to those around you. All over the country, there were men perfecting their ho-ho-hos as they helped Santa out with his appearances. The twinkle in the eye speaking to us of mischief and humour. 
Now, I suspect more than a few have been made redundant with the cancellations of so many Christmas parties, but I'm sure Christmas Eve will still see Santa make his epic journey around the world. And what about Presbyterians and our reputation? Are we known as joy-filled people? Well, probably not if you know your Presbyterian history at all. And over the years with my ecumenical past, I can tell you that at times Presbyterians have deserved their doer reputation. I'm not sure it's quite the case anymore, but there are still, I'm sure, one or two reverend I am jollies out there. <clears throat> In our challenging times, with anxiety levels rising again, it can be hard to find the focus of joy in this season. We can fake it till we make it, but ideally, I do want us to really explore what it means to be joyful. And I'll be honest with you, there is a part of me, especially with this new variance and all that that might mean in these coming weeks, there's part of me that wants to hide under the duvet and wait till this just all blows over. Yet the story of Mary encourages me to embrace all that is, trusting in the faithfulness and goodness of God. Her quiet acceptance of all that would come next is truly an inspiring example. She is engaged to be married, which in the culture there was as binding as being married, and only divorce would get you out of it. She lives in a culture where women are stoned for adultery, and yet she has to say that the child is God's. Honestly, even in our day and age, that would sound somewhat bonkers. We'd wonder perhaps if she'd been on the mulled wine a little bit too much. She might, in her time, have had a little bit more traction because of the Greek legends and, you know, all the stories of gods who were mating with humans and, you know, children that were born that were half god and half human. And, and you know, you can look up some Greek legends if you want to. There are no parallels in the Jewish culture, although their scripture and therefore ours does speak prophetically of a virgin birth. But Really, who out of any of us would entrust our child to a surrogate from a backwater town? Surely you'd want an experienced person who had the resources to raise your child with the very best. It's a natural instinct of parents to want the very best for their children. Indeed, Mary herself is deeply troubled. And it's interesting because that's an expression that is held on to through different translations of the scriptures. Mary is deeply troubled, not because of who Jesus is or will be, but because of who she is. She doesn't feel worthy of such an honour. Why would God pick her? And yet there is something beautiful about her simple acceptance that shows that she trusts God with her present and her future. God picked a young person, unknown and unexpected, to be the mother of his child. And there's something in that about the fact that God doesn't work the way perhaps we think he should or the way that our culture kind of expects him to. And that means that actually that's good news for us, because if you feel like a Mary, like an ordinary person who has nothing of real value for God, it shows that God values you and that God loves the ordinary. And let's not forget Joseph. Poor Joseph quite often just kind of gets left hanging about on the fringes. But he too has a strong faith. If Joseph had divorced her, it would have been a very different tale. Yet God again takes Joseph under his wing and helps him understand what is happening. And for me, Joseph is just as brave as Mary because he faced consequences from that decision that would have hurt him too. His willingness to marry her saved her from the death penalty. Now, to be fair, it wasn't always used, but there was an chance that Mary would have been stoned to death for adultery. Or 
More likely, he saved her from being alone all of her days because she would have been tainted by this birth out of wedlock. In our anxious world where we overthink so much, we could have been lost in, in what might have been. But it's important to kind of reflect on what might have been because we quite often just accept this as a beautiful sentimental story, especially when we see it put together by our children. And we kind of maybe miss the risks and the and the, the danger and, and the challenge that exists in this story. Where you don't really find over anxious thinking is in the actual story. If you remember, Joseph obviously does worry about it, but God's angel reassures him and all goes well from there. You see, God has a plan and he named both the children before they were even conceived. Last week, you might remember that we looked at the story of John the Baptist and spoke about the fact that his name is John. And this week we meet Jesus. And John had a fairly full description as well about his, but Jesus is given an even fuller identity and a very long term plan. And the threads of connection are made as they were last week. They are made in the in the connections to the throne of David, meeting the prophetic words of David himself amongst others. And again, even the reference to Jacob shows that this isn't something that has been thought of last minute. It, it ties right back into stories that we read about in the book of Genesis. The purpose of his presence is made clear and indeed Mary's song reflects this as well. And when I was reflecting on the, the, the passage for today, the words of Psalm 139 came to mind. When my bones were being formed, carefully put together in my mother's womb, when I was growing there in secret, you knew that I was there. You saw me before I was born. The days allotted to me had all been recorded in your book before any of them ever began. And it's just that wonder that God has a plan, that he has, he knows who we are before we even exist. And so Mary sings a song of joy, of rejoicing when she meets her cousin Elizabeth. And it's a song that speaks to us of her deep faith in God, of his holiness and his mercies to his people, an understanding of the binding together of the past, the present and the future. Hannah's song, you may remember from 1 Samuel, when God grants her prayer for a child, is a song of triumph over her enemies, whereas Mary's is more humble and contemplative, her gentleness apparent and her faith a shining example for all. And it made me wonder, do we sing songs of joy when our world fractures around us? Can we rejoice in the midst of uncertainty? Now remember, joy and the ability to rejoice are not based on the level of happiness. That's something else. We can be joyful and sad at the same time. We can mourn and rejoice at the same time. Of course, it's great when joy and happiness collide, and yet somehow that produces tears as well. So there's something bound up in that sense of joy that can carry us through good and dark times. He has brought down mighty kings from their thrones and lifted up the lowly, sings Mary. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. What Mary reminds us about, especially those of us who want for nothing, is that God turns our songs of sadness into songs of joy, that he works with the lowly, the marginalized, and those open to his presence. God turns it all around, and that can challenge those of us who are more like the rich young man. Do you remember him, the story in the Gospels? He was a good man doing all that was righteous, but still knew something was missing. And Jesus tells him to sell all he had and give it to the poor. When our reliance is on what we have and what we can get, we lose the ability to find joy in the simple things. 
To find joy is to be grateful. And to be grateful is to appreciate that all that we have and are comes from God. People try to grasp the wonder of Christmas, to capture that magic, to feel Christmas, not just to see it. But we cannot buy that feeling. Indeed, we cannot even give it with a pretty bow either. We cannot design it with amazing decorations. That Christmas spirit is to truly know the joy that can sing when our hearts are breaking. The Christmas gift is the songs of praise that flow when the world around you is challenging or frightening or disturbing. The Christmas experience is the confidence we have in our holy God who has made his kingdom eternal and covenanted to be with us now and forevermore. Our God is subversive and turns everything on its head and that's a source of hope for us. For sure, if humans remain in charge of our future, we don't have any hope. And our headlines this week alone prove that beyond any doubt. I mean, if God operated like us, where would we be? And that's what's so different about our God, because he doesn't play by our rules. He certainly invites us, however, to play by his. And his rules are just amazing. And bring out the ordinary, to welcome the outcast, the stranger, the refugee, to love the neighbor, the alien, as some versions of scripture put it for the stranger, and the enemy, to stand against injustice, to feed the poor, to exercise good stewardship over the earth. Our human-led leadership, our governments, cannot do this. They may try but they fall again and again. So this Christmas, whatever happens, and none of us truly know, whatever happens, let's not hide under the doobies. Rather, let's sing songs of praise. Let's be grateful for all that God has given us, especially his son. Reflect on the blessings, indeed count them, because it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Counter the negativity with positivity, even if that goes against your personality. Spreading joy. Find ways to be actively subversive. Consume less, but give away more. Promote the story of God on your Facebook feeds and social media. When you're tempted to moan and groan, pause and praise. When you want to give up, rest. And contemplate and pray constantly. And perhaps, like Mary and Joseph, be open to what God has for you. For He has a plan, and you can trust Him to work it through. And no matter how ordinary you feel to God, you are extraordinary. It won't be without its challenges because we are working in a broken world and you'll know from the story of Mary and Joseph it was not an easy life that they set out upon. But God was with them throughout it all and constantly you catch Mary treasuring these things up in her heart. God is faithful and he will help us navigate whatever this season and 2022 brings to us. So let's find our song of praise because God is present in our pandemic world. He has a plan. And we know from scripture that this world will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. So find the joy of Mary and sing literally or metaphorically and spread the Christmas joy. We're going to have a time of prayer now, which includes our offering prayer, because we offer more than just our money and we offer of ourselves to God. So we're going to have our offering prayer and part of our prayers for others includes a prayer that was written in 2008 by John Vandelaar and it still speaks to us in our world of 2021. Just as Mary was grateful that God had remembered his people and chosen her, 
we rejoice that God remembers us. And as he needed Mary to be Mary, the mother of Jesus, he needs us to work with him and for him to make his kingdom a reality to those who've yet to grasp the wonder of it. So let's spend a wee bit of time in prayer. Let us pray. God, who brought love into this world, be the love that dwells between us. God, who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God, who brought joy into this world, be the joy that dwells between us. God, the rock upon which we stand, be the centre, the focus of our lives, always and particularly in this Advent time. Accept all these offerings that we bring, that with us and through us all might come to know the love, hope, peace and joy that comes with knowing Jesus Emmanuel. May your kingdom come soon, may your will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is at hand. You proclaimed it, Jesus, but it often feels like it's a million miles away. You demonstrated its grace and showed its power, but the signs often appear faded or absent in our world. We need your kingdom to come, O God, in all its fullness, in all its glory. This waiting, this now and not yet experience of your reign is hard and frustrating. And so we pray for your kingdom to be revealed in our lives, turning our sickness and sin, our brokenness and fear into friendship and compassion, wholeness and joy. May your kingdom come to us now. We pray for your kingdom to be revealed in our neighbourhoods, turning our division and suspicion, our judgment and our competition into fellowship and care, compassion and service. May your kingdom come to us now. We pray for your kingdom to be revealed in our world, turning our war and our disparities, our consumption and our self-interest into peace and collaboration, stewardship and reverence. May your kingdom come to us now. Your kingdom is here and it is coming, O God. Make us faithful heralds of its message and tireless practitioners of its ways. For Jesus' sake. We pray for those we look to for leadership and find them lacking. We pray for honesty and integrity, not power and self-entitlement to be found in those we elect at national and local levels. We pray for those leaders doing their best in a movie setting that refuses to end as the new COVID variant adds another chapter to this seemingly endless saga. We pray for those who undermine and criticise, who prize point scoring over building up and restoring the world around us. We pray for our leaders around the world who fight the same pandemic war yet often battle the wrong enemy, forgetting our common humanity. May your kingdom come to us now. We pray for your church as she enters what is called a busy season. We pray for stressed out nativity organisers and exhausted ministers and worship leaders. We pray for families trying to rejoice in the chaos and the crowds yet mourning or struggling with mental health or illness. We pray for congregations and their people who fear the crowds or miss the closeness of community and church buildings. We pray for those trying to be someone or something for everyone and feeling the burden. So Lord, we pray that we would pause by the manger and rejoice with Mary as she treasures everything in her heart. We pray that we would look forward to your return and feel empowered by your spirit to sing the angel song far and wide. We pray that whether we worship you at home in church or even a stable, that we would know your holy presence and truly worship and rejoice. May your kingdom come to us now. Hear our prayers for those we know about those we love, and those we struggle to love.
May we truly be your Advent people in our communities. In your name and for your world, we pray. Amen. Thank you for worshipping again with us this week. It's been great uh, to share with you and thank you for the wee messages that folks have been sending in. I really do appreciate the encouragement and it's good to know that we are able to worship together even across some great distances. May you truly know God's presence with you this week. Our theme obviously has been around joy and it seemed really appropriate of course to finish with that wonderful carol joy to the world and this week it's the salvation army that brings this one to us so i hope that you can truly feel joyful even in the most hard of hardest of times joy comes from deep within built on the confidence that god is present joy to the world the Lord is come. And our blessing. God loves you so very much. Blessed be the God who so loved the world he sent his one and only Son. Blessed be the God who comes to set us free. Blessed be the God who shows unfailing love and mercy towards us. Blessed be the God whose light breaks into our darkness and illuminates the path of peace before us. Go from here in the light and love of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.